Hello everyone, this video tutorial is for the Melaison Shoulder Bag by Deja Designs. This bag comes in three sizes. You can choose between a small, a medium, and a large. This one here is the large. It features this diagonal front zipper pocket, which fits a phone perfectly if you choose to put your phone in it. You can also put your sunglasses inside. This has a top zipper closure, so keeps everything inside your bag safe inside. Nothing will fall out. There is a zipper pocket, as you can see here, with a zipper overlay. I'll unzip this so you can see the zipper pocket. It's quite roomy. Then underneath that zipper pocket is some slip pockets. And there's instructions in the pattern for dividing those up. Just trying to make it so you can see. So you can see the zipper pocket here, and then your slip pocket. And again, has this top zipper closure. Then there are the side connectors here that attach your strap. And speaking of the strap, it's got this beautiful design where it's got this point here. I really enjoyed making this. You have the solid side and then the side that has those points. This pattern does have instructions for making a crossbody strap. It is said to be for the small, but if you want to make this into a crossbody bag as well or have both options for the straps, go ahead and make both and make this into a crossbody bag. You'll just attach it with your swivel hooks. It has a oval bottom, which I did some stitching on my bottom just to give it some extra design. And as you saw inside, it's quite roomy. It is a slouchy bag. So there's not a lot of interfacing required for this, for this bag, which is awesome. So I'm going to show you all the steps for making this bag in this video tutorial. Everything from putting this pocket in to installing the zipper pocket inside. Everything is going to be shown in this video tutorial. I'll walk you through all the steps. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is read through the entire pattern. After you read through the entire pattern, you'll want to choose which size of bag you're going to make. This pattern does come in a small, a medium, and a large. Once you've chosen which size you're making, you want to print and cut out the pattern pieces that correspond with that size. Then you'll want to choose your material and cut out all your pattern pieces in your chosen material. One thing to note, on page 3 in the pattern, she does talk about interfacing and stabilizers. So as you see, I interfaced and stabilized my cotton, but I did not on my vinyl. Some vinyls, cork and faux leather, don't require interfacing. So again, you'll just want to refer to page 3 of the pattern so you're not cutting out interfacing that's not needed. Once you have all your pattern pieces cut out and interfaced, an extra little step that I like to take is to mark where the tops of my pattern pieces are. So I like to mark it with the T. I also like to mark the centers and I like to mark it with the corresponding letter so that when I get to that step in the pattern, I'm not searching for that pattern piece. I just know to flip it over and I'll find the corresponding letter on the pattern piece. Another step I like to take because I did read through and read ahead in the pattern is I like to make any marks now that I can. This just helps save me some time. So as you'll notice on my side connector, I've made some marks. And this just again, just saves some time. If you choose not to do this, that's okay. It's given in the pattern. You can do it when we approach that step. The other thing I did was gone ahead and marked my zipper facing and I cut out my zipper pocket overlay so that I don't have to do that when I get to that step. The other thing I like to do is prepare my zippers, so I like to cut them to length, and once I have them cut to length, I like to mark what they're for. This way here, I don't accidentally grab the wrong zipper. And then I'm all set and ready to go because I've got all my pattern pieces cut out, all my zippers cut out, all, everything all marked. I just can get right to sewing. So once you are done and you have that, and if you've chosen to go ahead and make your marks and you have that done, we can get started on sewing our bag. So the first thing we're going to do is make our straps. So we need our straps. So they'll look like this. If you're doing a crossbody strap, you will just have one piece and we need some interfacing. If you read through the pattern, you'll notice that she mentioned some interfacing for where your um, D rings and such go. So I have my interfacing here. So if you're using cotton, she has you do some folds and some pressing. I'm using vinyl for this part, so I don't need to do the folds and the pressing. She does have you mark the centers, So I've gone ahead and made the marks on my centers. So I've done that. I've also marked down the center the entire length of both strap, both strap pieces, because this is a double-sided strap. So the first thing I need to do is fold in my ends so that it, they form a little point. really sticky. So we're going to fold in these ends here 
so that they come to a point like this. And if you're using cotton, you're going to have this end folded up just like that, and then you'll fold them up as I'm doing now. So you use a piece of double-sided tape. If you have a glue stick, a glue stick will work, but you'll want to press it with your iron in order to dry the glue before you sew. If you're using vinyl, you can't press with an, or cork or faux leather, you can't press with an iron, so you'll have to um, allow it to dry before you do so. Now, if you're using vinyl, cork, or faux leather, these, ends here will overlap slightly. So they won't be meeting directly in the center, they will overlap ever so slightly, just like that. And you'll do that for both ends of the bottom strap. Tape is even sticking to the table when I put it down. <laughs> and again, the other end will look just like that. Now she has you make a mark, so I've already made mine, make a mark, and the measurement for that is in the pattern. You'll want to refer to page 15 for this to see what the measurement is. So you'll want to make a mark there. So once you make that mark that you were told to make and with the measurement given, you want to place some tape just below this mark, not right on the mark, just below it. So. There we go. And you'll do this on both ends of the strap. And don't remove the backing just yet. So once you have that, you've had the backing removed from one side, you'll take the top strap and line it up with that mark you made. The tape will help hold this in place, so you'll line it up, make sure your sides are lined up all evenly, and it'll look like this. We're now going to top stitch this little V, or arrow, however you want to call it. You're going to just top stitch just there. And that's how it'll look once you have it top stitched. So you're just top stitching just along that little arrow. Now we're going to put this so it is wrong sides up and we need our hardware. So you're going to grab your two swivel hooks. And then what we're going to do is place some double-sided tape all along this center seam, except there is a mark that you need to keep in mind on this side. So again here, you're going to stop when you reach this mark that you made here. So you'll stop with the tape there. So place it all along this whole edge, stopping at that mark. So that's a good knowing that you have that tape there, that's a good place to know that that's where you have to start, a uh, stop, sorry, or start. And you'll go the whole entire length of the strap.
You're not going to remove this backing. You're going to leave the paper backing on. Don't remove it. And there you go. So I have this the whole length of my strap. Now we're going to thread our swivel hook through the ends of the strap. So you just kind of have to push it through. Do that for both swivel hooks. Just like that. Once you have them on, you're then going to make sure it's not twisted. Then you're going to take this piece, the top strap, and overlap it with the bottom strap, just as we did before we sewed this edge down. So remove that tape that's covering it, and then making sure your strap is not twisted, overlap it. So what I did was I took my strap and I laid it like this, then I brought it so that they come together, then I flip over to make sure that I'm lining it up with that mark that you made. I'm going to pull back my tape here so that it's not in the way when I'm top stitching because I went a little too far. And now I'm going to top stitch again this just this V. So you don't want to top stitch anywhere else. And right now you will have a strap that looks like this, a whole loop. Now we need to trim this piece here. So we need to trim these just as she shows in the pattern. So you're trimming it from the top stitch line over. Just be careful not to cut the bottom strap. Or your stitches. So it'll look like this. You'll do that to both sides. Just like that. So now you have them all trimmed. So I had tape here that I had to pull back and it's now not sticking. So I'm going to do as it says in the pattern and add the tape there. Because you weren't supposed to tape there as well and I accidentally did. This tape is really sticky. <laughs> going to slowly remove the tape down the entire strap and fold the edges in, the long edges in to meet the center as you do this. So just like this. So you're folding them in and the tape is holding them. If your tape is not sticky enough, I'll link to a video that I did for how to make your tape sticky again. 
I'll link that below in the description. But you can also use some clips because sometimes I find that the tape does come unstuck a little bit. So you can also use tape if you're finding your tape is not holding. You can also use some um, wonder clips and just clip it along as you go and that'll help hold it in place until you sew. So we're just pressing this in, the long edges in, to meet that center mark that we made. The other thing you'll have to do is move your swivel hooks as you're going because they are going to get in your way. So you'll just keep sliding them out of your way. And when you approach this section where you added that tape, just remove the backing there. It'll be a sep its own separate little piece and just continue pressing into the center. You'll then repeat that for the other side. Now to note, she has mentioned that you can put a piece of reinforcement here where the D-rings will go or your hardware will go. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this back up on this end and I'm going to add this piece of reinforcement here. And because I have that double-sided tape, that's holding it in place. So I'm going to need to put another piece of double-sided tape down the length of this decoville that I'm adding here. If you've done your strap in all cotton, you can go ahead and press this into the strap, like um, to fuse it into the strap. You don't need to just use the double-sided tape. You can press it with your iron. But if you've used vinyl, you won't be able to do that, so that's where this is handy to have, the double-sided tape, because it'll help hold it in place for you. I'm going to open this side back up and add that piece. I should have did this before I taped it down. This is definitely something you want to do before you get to this step where you're taping this top part of your strap into the center. I forgot. One side's done, now I'm going to flip and I'm going to repeat that whole process of pressing the long edges in to meet the center for the other side. And I'm going to place clips here where the bulk is where we connected the two pieces here to form that V. I'm just going to add a clip there to help really hold that in place because it is a bit bulky there and I find that it's coming, it's lifting up, it's not staying stuck.
what I was doing there was just redrawing on my center mark because I used chalk the center mark is kind of coming off so I'm just redrawing it on so that it's there for our next step again you'll have to keep moving your swivel hooks out of the way because they will get in your way as you're going as you noticed I moved mine that way now because I've got clips here so it's going to get in the way of the clips And again, as I mentioned earlier, if your tape is lifting up, go ahead and place some clips along the edges. That'll help hold it. So now you're going to have a piece that looks like this. I'm going to turn my swivel hook so they're on the right side, just like that, because that's the right side where, the fold, where you don't see the fold. So now we're going to take those center marks and we're going to line them up. So you made center marks on both pieces, so I'm going to follow my center mark here and I'm going to put them together so you want to line up those center marks and place them together just like that and what we did there was we ensured that everything will be lined up nice and even and then you can use some double-sided tape here as well so I'm going to open this back up first and I'm going to add some double-sided tape along this edge here Another thing you want to do is position it so that your swivel hooks are on each side. And because I know where my center marks are, so I'm going to look again and clip it. I know I need to place some tape from this edge to this edge. So I have it clipped in the center. I know that I need to place some tape from here to here. So I'm going to leave that clip for now so I can see or create creases. And then I'm going to start placing my tape in the center. So I just wanted to share, this is my first time making a strap just like this. So I've never made a strap like this before, so I'm pretty excited about it. So it does look like a really pretty strap. I'm going to place this tape, as I said, all the way down the center of the strap. And again, if you don't have tape, you can use clips for this part. Just like that. So now I'm going to remove the tape from one end. And I'm going to stop at my center mark and then line up that center mark and stick it together. So I've removed the tape up to the center mark, so I'm going to find the center mark on the top part of the strap and I'm going to line them up and stick them together. I'm not going to remove the tape after the center mark because I want to line up everything else on the other end first and then leave the tape backing on so that it doesn't dry out. And then you'll stick these so they are wrong sides touching, so all you see is the pretty sides of the strap, all the way down the length of the strap. And you're forcing your D ring, or your sorry, your swivel hook into the corner. And then I'm going to move my clips here so that it holds that all together. So it'll look like that, just the one half. And then I'm going to slowly continue to move this tape. and keep pressing this other side down the same way I did for that end. And again, I'm going to put my clips back on this end because it is a bit bulky there. Push it down 
and there you go it's all taped together so that was a lot of tape that we just used but as you can see it helps hold it together and that way there when I'm sewing it doesn't come apart if you don't have tape like I said you can go ahead and put clips all the way down sometimes I like to do that as well so I'm going to add a couple of extra clips just to help hold it in place all right, so once you have everything all pressed together, and as I said, I've added some clips, we're going to top stitch this strap all the way around. When we start, we're not going to back stitch. Instead, we're going to leave long tails, we're going to start stitching, and we're going to go all the way around across back down. And when you're sewing by the hardware, sew as close as you can to it. When you come back down here, again, you're not going to back stitch. You're going to stop in the same needle hole that you started in, and then you're going to leave long tails. I'll show you how we're going to tie that all off when we're done stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch. If you want to prevent stitches that go on an angle, what I like to do when I get to the corner is reduce my stitch length to as short as it can go, take one stitch, return my stitch length back to the length I was using to top stitch and go all the way to the next corner. Once I get to that next corner, I will then do the same thing, but first I'll check to make sure that my seam allowance is good at the top. I'll do the same thing, reduce my stitch length return back to my stitch length and then I'll continue sewing and I'll do that at each corner and that just helps prevent those angled stitches. Again, I've approached a corner, so again, reduce my stitch length, one stitch, back up to the stitch length, go across, and I do like to check to make sure, I do like to turn it and make sure that I'm going to be at the accurate seam allowance for top stitching before I do this, reducing my stitch length, because sometimes it's not the exact accurate seam allowance when I turn my strap, so I do like to check. And now that I've done that, I'm going to continue stitching all the way back down this other side of the strap. So I'm approaching back where I started, where I have my long tail. So I'm going to go into that first needle hole, lift up my needle, and I'm going to pull some tails. So, oops. Throwing my scissors at myself. So now I have these long tails. So what you need to do is take a needle and you're going to thread the needle with these tails. to do first is cut them so they're all the same length. I find it's easier to thread them together when they're all the same length. Just like that. You're going to thread them through. So take the top two, thread them through the seam. So th thread them back through so they come out between your two material, your two uh, material, your two pieces of the strap. So right in the center there. So just like that, pull that one through. Then I'm going to do the same for the bottom two threads. Don't 
Doing it this way just gives a nice clean finish. You don't have all the back stitches. Some people don't like back stitching. So I'll use this method anytime I don't want to see any back stitches. So now I have those both like that. I have the top and the bottom. I'm going to create a knot. And again, it's between the two layers, so you're not going to see this, but you're not going to see it because we're going to do one more thing with these threads in the needle. Just be careful as you're tying the knot when you're pulling because I pulled too hard before and I've broken my thread. So there we go, I've tied the knot. Now I'm going to thread these on my needle again, and because these are all different lengths, again, it's easier to thread them if they're all the same length, so I just trim it. Then I'm going to thread them all on my needle. This can be a bit tricky, but just be patient. Just like that. And I'm going to thread this needle so it goes between the two layers, so between the top and the bottom strap and I'm threading it all the way through till it comes out the other side. So you want it to come out on the other side here. Just like that. So you can see that my needle, I don't know if you can see the needle here. I'm trying to show you. See the needle there where it's shimmering? It comes out between these two here, the two layers. And I'm just going to pull it all the way through now. So I've pulled it through to the other side. Now I'm going to take that and trim those threads. So the knot you made is now buried in between the layers. You have no back stitching at all on your strap. Now that the threads are all pulled through and you're on your strap, we need to make some marks for adding rivets to our strap. If you don't have rivets, you can use Chicago screws. If you don't have either of those, don't worry about it. You don't need to add them. So you need to make those marks at the measurements given in the pattern. So that is on page 17. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will punch my holes. All right, so next we need our side connector. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my side connector pieces now. Here they are. So your pieces may look different if you're using cotton. You'll go ahead and follow the, all the instructions for the cotton straps. So these are what mine look like and I have my interfacing already attached. I've gone ahead and I've made my marks already for where I'm punching thi or placing things. Now I had to make some marks for where I'm installing rivets so I'm going to go ahead and punch those holes now. So as I was saying at the beginning I like to make all these marks ahead of time so that when I get to this step, I just get right into doing what needs to be done. I'm not stopping to have to make the marks. It's also easier for the video. I don't have to stop and go make the marks. So the measurements for where you're placing the marks are on your pattern piece. You'll want to refer to page 20 for more information on that. So I'm going to punch all my holes out for where my rivets are going to be placed. that so I have all the holes marked. So next I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to place it on the wrong side of this connector here. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did on the straps. We're going to fold this edge up to the center just as we did on the strap so you get that little V again. And again they will overlap just a little.
So it'll look like that. So you'll do that on both pieces. And there we go, both are done. Now we're going to place tape down the entire length of this connector. So starting where your little point is here and you're gonna go all the way up. There we go. Once we have the tape on, you'll remove the backing and you're going to press those long edges in to meet the center. and it'll look like that once you have them all pressed in. So you'll repeat that for the other side. The other thing I forgot to do is I have some marks here that I made, so I'm going to transfer them just like this. then push this back down. It doesn't want to stay anymore. There we go. So these two marks are important. You want to transfer them once you have this pressed in. We do make them later, but if you've already made them now, you do make them later in the pattern. If you've had already made them, like I did, so that I don't have to pull out my pattern piece and do the markings, go ahead and just do what I'm doing, transfer them over. I wasn't very good at putting my tape on evenly, so that's why I have to keep using more tape. I didn't go evenly up the center.
and making sure my marks are transferred. Just like that. Now you have your connector all shaped and done. Okay, so now it'll all look like that and I've got my marks that I've made for top stitching and for the D-ring. Now that's what it'll look like. Next we need to do is place a line of double-sided tape up the back. So you're going to go from the bottom but not right at the bottom. You're going to stop you know, just above the bottom a little bit, just about here, and go all the way up to where your D-ring mark is. So you should have already made the D-ring marks. If you didn't, go ahead and take out your pattern piece and make those marks now. So I'm going to place that piece of tape up that middle. Again, you're not going right to the bottom, so stop just before the bottom or start just before the bottom. And you're not removing the tape backing, you're going to leave the tape backing on, so don't remove the tape backing. And again, you're going right up to that D-ring mark. Just like that. So the D-ring mark will be your second mark. There's my top stitch line, there's my D-ring line. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. Again, don't go right to the bottom. Just like that. This piece is coming off, so I'm going to add a little bit of tape behind it. There we are. So if you're using cotton connectors, there's instructions for that. I'm using vinyl. I'm just wiping off the, the chalk in case you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm using vinyl, so I followed the vinyl uh, side connector instructions. But if you're using uh, cotton, the instructions for that are going to be on page 22. So you'll want to refer to that. It starts on page 22 and goes to page 23. So you'll just want to refer to that if you're making the cotton strap uh, side connectors. So now we're going to finish the side connectors. So the next thing we need to do is take your pattern piece and mark the top stitch line. I've already gone ahead and done that. So you'll mark the top stitch line and then you will top stitch this. So you can use a piece of washi tape as she did in the pattern. You can use a piece of washi tape to mark where you're starting and stopping. I'm going to transfer that line I made to the other side and we're going to start top stitching at that mark. We're gonna go all the way around across the top and back down and you're going to stop at that mark. Again, don't back stitch just as we did for the straps. We're going to leave those long tails and tie them off. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to transfer this mark onto the front side. And I can do that just by lining these up. So now again, I'm going to start top stitching here. I'm not, I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to leave long tails, go all the way up, cross the top, back down, leave long tails, and we will tie them off.
there's one, I'm going to repeat that for the second one. And there's my second. So they're all top stitched. Now we're going to pull these tails through to the other side. So you want to pull them through to the back side or the wrong side of the fabric. Just pull them through. So you'll take one thread and if you just pull it, you'll see it'll cause a loop on the back side there. You can just grab that loop. That's what you're grabbing and pulling through. So you pull your threads through both to the back side. Once you have that done, tie a knot. And then you'll cut your tails. I'm repeating that for this one, pulling them through, tying them off, and then I'll cut them. Be careful not to pull too hard because you don't want to break your thread. This one does not want to cooperate. It keeps sliding out. There we go. Now I'm going to cut my little thread. Careful you don't cut your knot. So you want to kind of cut away from the knot a little bit. And it'll look like that. You'll have no tails anywhere. So I wanted to show you what happens when you break your thread. So I broke my thread here. So what I need to do is pull a couple of stitches out because there's no knot holding this anymore. So I'm going to go back a couple of stitches and then I'm going to do the same thing we just did in pull it through to the back side and tie off a knot. That's because when I was making that knot I pulled too hard and that caused it to break the thread. So that's why I was saying to be careful. And again, you're just doing the same thing that we did with the other end. You're just going to pull it through, tie it off, and then because we're not back stitching, you can just start in the hole that you stopped at, start stitching, and then we'll pull the threads through and tie them off and nobody would ever know. That's the nice thing about using, using this method is that when you do make these little mistakes, and even if you're not using this method and you do backstitch somewhere along the long, along while you're sewing, go ahead and you know do what I did and you don't need to backstitch, you can just pull these through. So you wanna start in that same needle hole so that your stitches all line up. You're going to stop when you get to that needle hole. So I just checked.
there you go. You can't even tell. I'm going to pull my threads through. Now I'm going to tie those new threads off and then tie the bottom threads as well. And again, this just helps where I've accidentally tied and broken the stitches or the threads. If you are top stitching along and say you get skip stitches, sometimes I'll go and undo some of the stitches and then I'll tie it off and I'll do it this way and restart top stitching just to fix that top stitching. So it's just another trick I use when I'm top stitching if I get a skip stitch. Because you're not back stitching, you don't see where you've done this. I'm actually happy that happened and I was able to show you how to fix that. Normally it'd be something that would frustrate me, but for the video, for learning purposes, it's good to have these things happen. <coughs> and there you go. It's all top stitched. You can't even tell where I've joined it because I have tied it off on the back. So that's how that will look with it all top stitched. Again, you've pulled your threads through. Now this is done. We're going to stick these off to the side for now. I'm going to clip mine together. I'm going to put them so they're wrong sides facing together, uh, right sides facing together, wrong sides out this way here. If any teeth mark happen, it's happening on the wrong sides. Put these to the side for now. We're going to move on. All right, so next we're going to work on our exterior and we're going to do our diagonal zipper pocket. So we need to take our diagonal zipper pocket facing and if you haven't done already, you'll want to make the marks that are given in the pattern to make. So you'll want to go ahead and do that. So I've done that already. And the next thing we're going to do is take our pattern paper pattern piece and make marks on our exterior for where we're placing this zipper facing. So this is the exterior B piece. This is your piece that's going to be on the bottom of the bag. So you want to make sure you're grabbing your piece that goes on the bottom. Once you have that mark made, like I do here, you're going to place your zipper facing between those marks. So I use chalk so I can just wipe this away when I'm done. So I'm going to pin my zipper facing between those marks that I made. just like that. Now I'm using white because that's the same color as my zipper as she mentioned in the cutting instructions to you know either make this so that it matches your material or so that it matches your zipper. My zipper is going to be white as you saw so this will match my zipper and you won't notice. Once it is between the marks so you're placing it between the marks so that it is pretty sides touching the wrong side is facing up you're going to sew along the drawn line so you're going to sew down this line across the long line and back up that short line. Once you have that stitched, we'll come back and I'll show you what to do. One more thing, because you were top stitching, you wanna change your stitch length back to the stitch length you used for stitching. So you'll wanna go ahead and do that now. And I like to make my stitch length a little bit shorter just for this, just helps give it some extra strength, I find. And here you can back stitch. Again, we're in a corner, so I do the same thing as we did. Take that one stitch, then return back to my stitch length, turn my material, and keep stitching. The reason for that is it prevents the angled corners, so you get nice crisper corners.
And there we go, it's all stitched in place. I'm going to remove these clips for now. They are no longer needed. And now we want to cut into this zipper window through the, all the layers on this line. Cutting right up to the corner, not through your stitches. So just like that, you'll have it, it'll look like this when you cut it apart. So again, be careful not to cut into your stitches, you don't want to hit those. Next we're going to press this zipper window, if you can, or finger press it. I'm using a material that cannot be pressed with my iron, so I'm just going to finger press it. After we finger press, you want to trim this zipper area window, and she tells you the measurement in the pattern, so you want to trim that down. Just be careful you don't cut the piece of the facing that we need because you do need that piece to come back onto the exterior. I'm going to press it again. And then I'm going to use some double-sided tape to help hold this down so that I don't have to worry about it flipping up like this. Again, this is because I couldn't press it, so this is sort of like helping me hold it in place, kind of like my press. And then one more piece of tape. That was just to hold down that one edge. This tape is super sticky. It sticks to my hands. So now I'm going to fold this over as if I was pressing it. See, it looks like that, and I'm going to do that on the short edges too. And there we are, it's all pressed. If you used cotton, you can go ahead and use an iron to do this. So there's also some other instructions for 
helping this stay clipped, add some clips to the corners. And then all around the edges to secure it. Mine's taped down, this is not as necessary, but if you're using quilt cotton, this will be a little bit more necessary for you. So then there is also instructions to secure this with some painter's tape. So I'm going to grab my painter's tape and secure these down for now with painter's tape. Make sure you're pulling it really tight. And again, I taped mine down on the other side, so mine was already pulled pretty tight, but this just helps hold this piece down. So I'm just going to move this over here for now. Next we need our diagonal zipper pocket pieces and the zipper. So in the pattern she gives some instructions for some measurements to make, some markings to make. So for example, mark where your zipper is, that this is your front piece and this is your back piece. These are very important, don't skip that. There's also a bit that you have to trim off your front piece and that is also given in the pattern so you'll want to refer to that to trim this front piece off. Once you have that done, there is a measurement given for what length to cut your zipper. You'll want to go ahead and refer to that as well and cut your zipper to length if you haven't already. So I've put my back lining piece off to the side for now and I'm just working with my front lining piece. So I'm placing this right side up so pretty side is facing me and then I'm placing my zipper so that it is right side up. Again, pretty side is facing me. So with the zipper, when it's closing, you want to have it closing so it's towards the top. So going towards the top. So that's why it's important to mark where your top and your bottom is on your front pattern piece. So you want to make it so that it goes towards the top. You're going to pin this in place or clip it in place. You can even use some tape here if you prefer to hold it down. Some of the double sided tape. And just pin this all along that top raw edge so that the top edges are lining up. So the top edge of the zipper and the top raw edge of your piece F are going to line up. Now we're going to baste this in place. Once you have that sewn, the next thing we need to do is add some paint, uh, some double-sided tape to the edge we just basted. So where your stitches are, you're going to place that double-sided tape along that edge. to line it up with the top edge just to make sure it's not going to be seen later. Then we'll remove the backing. like that and then you need this exterior piece that has the zipper facing so you'll need this Oops, this tape is very sticky it sticks to everything I'm going to remove my clips and you're going to line up this edge that doesn't have the tape stuck to it the double-sided tape stuck to it with the top edge here of your zipper facing centering this in the zipper facing pocket
you want to take your time here and get everything lined up nicely so that it is a nice even seam. And she mentions if your zipper has... So you want to take your time and line this up as nicely as possible. Get it all nice and centered. Just like that. Once we have that done, we're going to top stitch this. So you're going to leave this front lining piece flipped up and you're just going to top stitch along this long edge and you're going to leave tails for tying off so no back stitching and she gives a me measurement for where to start and stop so you'll want to refer to that in the pattern so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch just this long edge you're not doing the sides so you're starting and stopping on these long edges <laughs> so now that I've got that all set and ready to go I'm going to top stitch again you leave long tails When you approach your zipper, you'll want to slide it so that it's out of the way, so that you don't accidentally hit it. And I'm approaching the end here, so I'm going to stop with my needle down. Make sure I'm the distance I need to be away, which I am when I turn. I'm going to lift up my needle and pull some long tails. Then we're going to do as we did with the strap and the side connectors. We're going to pull those long tails through to the wrong side and tie them off. Again, this just makes it so there's no back stitching. And here's my girl Buddy. If you've watched some of my videos, she likes to come in. only table she's allowed on in the house so she likes to take advantage of it. So I'm just tying my threads so if Buddy's in the way you're not missing anything right now I'm just tying those threads knotting them. Again don't pull too hard on the threads just enough to knot them. You don't want to pull too hard and break your threads. Just like that. So I'm going to cut my tails or the threads so that they're not too long. And it'll look like that. Now it's stuck to the exterior. I'm going to, probably going to need to use water to get this mark off, which is fine. Okay. So now that we have that done, the next thing we need to do is fold down the sides of this zipper, of this exterior, and pin them so that they are out of the way. And then we're going to take our back piece and we're going to lay our zipper on top of the back piece again so that the right side of the back piece is facing up and your zipper again is facing up. And you're lining up those top raw edges. didn't stay as long today. Sometimes she stays a little bit longer and then gets in my way and becomes a little bugger. So there it is. Now we're going to baste this edge so that it is together with the zipper. You can back stitch here. When you approach the zipper, same thing, slide it so it's out of the way.
And as I'm going, I like to make sure that my zipper stays lined up with the top edge of my material. I'm going to clip my thread. I'm removing my clips because the next thing we need to do is top stitch these corners here. Now I wanted to note something that I thought was important and an extra little tip. Say you're sewing this on, you're attaching your zipper and you realize your zipper pull doesn't go towards the top. This will be the top up here. So say you realize that. Don't panic. You can always slide the zipper right off because you have no stops on your zipper at this moment. Slide the zipper right off the zipper tape and just put the pull back on starting from the bottom so that it zips up. And I'll link to a video in the description that shows how I put my pulls on my zipper. Um, so I'll link to that below in the description. And then once you have that redone and re put back on, your zipper will be facing the right way. So don't panic, you can always just take the zipper off before you stitch these edges here. Check to make sure it zips going up towards the top. So don't panic, you can put your zipper on, it'll be in the correct orientation when you're done, not to panic. And that's all you need to do to fix your zipper. So now we're going to stitch the sides. So you again need to leave long tails and you're sewing just these short edges. And when you approach this stitching that you've started and stopped here, you'll stop and pull long tails so that you can pull these to the back. So we're going to do that on this side as well. And it's hard to see, so I really take my time checking to make sure it's all lined up. So again, no back stitching, just stitch. You can back stitch up at the top up here just a little bit. Sometimes I just go back one stitch because that will be in the seam allowance up there so I'm not overly concerned. But down here isn't, this is where you see your stitches more clearly. So we're going to tie that off. Again, I back stitch just two little stitches at the top here because that is in the seam allowance, but if you want to err on the side of caution, you can go ahead and do the same thing for both ends. So I'll do that on the other side just so you can see. And be careful when you're tying your knots, don't pull this too tight. You want to tighten it, but don't pull too much because you can break your thread. So I've stitched that side, starting, starting where I stopped and I went up. Now I'm going to stitch the other side. So I'm going to start at the bottom and not backstitch and I'm going to leave long tails again. Starting in that last stitch that I made earlier. And it's a bit hard to see because my presser foot's in the way, so I just kind of like to poke and look and make sure that I'm in the right spot. we go. So now you're going to pull these threads through to the wrong side. Tie them off and be careful not to pull too tight because you don't want to break your threads. So tie all your threads off. And then trim your threads. I'm going to knot it one more time. You can also add a bit of fray stop or fray check over your threads. That just helps them, gives them some extra stability so that they don't come undone. It's some extra security. And there you have it. 
I've stitched the two short edges on both sides. Once you have that done, you will have a zipper that doesn't come off because it is stuck between all your stitching. Now we need to sew up the sides of our zipper pocket. I'm also going to remove my zipper tape, uh, painter's tape first because this is not needed on there. And I like to reuse it, so I'll stick it off to the side for now. Now we need to sew these pocket lining edges closed. So you'll pin them all together. Pin it all so that they are right sides together. So for these short edges, you're going to sew as close as you can, as close as you can get here. So you won't use the exact seam allowance that was given in the pattern. She gives some instructions for here. So you're going to sew here as close as you can. And then there's a seam allowance that you're going to use for sewing these long edges. And again, then you'll sew here as close as you can as well to this edge here without going over your exterior. And this you can back stitch on. So again, you're sewing as close as you can get to that edge and then continue sewing with the seam allowance given in the pattern for the long edges. When I get to them, I like to back stitch and then turn and then back stitch again. I just find it helps reinforce my corners. And there you go, it's all stitched. You now have a zipper pocket that you can't put your hand through because it's all closed off and there is your zipper pocket. Next we need our side connectors. So you're going to take your side connector and place your D-ring at the D-ring mark that you made. So I'm going to transfer mine to the right side. For mine, I'm using some rectangle rings. So they look like this, I'm using rectangle rings. And I'm going to slide this down till it meets that line I made. Do the same thing for both. I'm going to remove this paper backing and fold the side connector. so that it is at that mark that I made for where my D-ring is, and I'm going to fold it down. Just like that. I'm going to repeat that for the other side. Same thing, folded it so it meets the back. And then you're going to place these at the marks given in the pattern. So you'll want to refer to your pattern for how far you're placing these down on your pattern piece, on your exterior. So I've done that for both, so put one oops, to the side for now. And you'll place the first one at that measurement and mark that she gives in the pattern. 
and the measurement and mark before I continue is on page 30. So you'll want to refer to page 30 for where you're placing this on your exterior B panel. <coughs> Now we're going to, again, have some long tails, and we're going to top stitch this around the edges, starting and stopping, just as we did, leaving long tails, and pull it through to the back and tie it off. And because this is shifting around, I'm going to add some extra tape onto this piece here, this middle piece that we pushed down. just help hold it all the way up. And again, I'm just centering it and lining up with that mark that I made. There we go, just like that. And now it's stuck on. So I'm going to top stitch this all the way around and I'm going to start and stop top, top stitching where we started and stopped when we top stitched the first half of the strap connector. To really take my time lining it up to make sure I get into the hole that I stopped at just to make sure it's all lined up. I'll increase my stitch length and stitch. Do the same thing I did before. Take one stitch in the corner. This just helps lock the stitches so I don't get angled stitches. And I always check before I do that stitch to make sure that when I turn it's going to be the accurate seam allowance. Pull your long tails and pull them through to the back side just as we did with our strap. Again, this just stops you from having any back stitching. So you'll see there's no back stitching at all, just nice straight smooth stitching. And all these threads on the back side, you don't have to trim them as short as I do. You can leave them a little bit longer. I just like trimming them short because there's they're not needed there anymore, so I just trim them down. But you can leave them.
And there you have it, it's all top stitched down, across, and back up the other side. Now you need to, using your hole punch, punch the holes again for the rivets where the back through the back side here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So you're going to re-punch through those holes so you punch it through your exterior B as well. And because you've already made holes for rivets before, you're just going to go right into those exact same holes. to install our rivets. Now because you're going through a bit more thickness here, you may need to use a longer post rivet. So you may need to use a different size rivet than what you used on your strap. So this is a medium that I'm putting on this one, a medium rivet. You may need to use a different size or a smaller size, bigger or smaller. It just depends on the thickness of the material that you're using. mention this first hole I'm going to remove my rivet I totally forgot we are not adding that rivet just yet you're leaving your first hole up here with no rivet in it you're only if you're making the large you're only doing the second and third if you're making the small you're only doing the second so your top rivet or top hole will be left open no rivet no nothing in it so that's for both sizes, just like that. So I have my top hole left and I've got the second and third, again because I'm making the large, I've got the second and third installed. So I've just taken the other rivet out, sorry I didn't mean to confuse you, but again that top hole is going to stay open. So the first thing you need to do on page 30, there are some mentions of some marks that we need to make on the long edges of both the exterior pieces. So I've gone ahead and did that before I came back. So you'll make those marks given with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. So that again is on page 30. Once you have your marks all made, you're going to pin these together. So you want to pin them so that the top, which will be this long edge of your top exterior P piece, is at the top. So this long edge will be lined up with this short edge here so they'll look like this so you see this short edge here lines up with the long edge short edge here lines up with the long edge and I'm just pushing my triangle ring down so it stays out of the way and I'm going to line up these edges and she has you line them up so that there is some overhang and that's how you know everything lines up correctly because the seam where you drew those lines will line up with the top of the panel you're placing with it. So these are going right sides together or pretty sides touching. So that line here that you drew on both edges will reach the top of the 
panel you're pinning it to. So you're going to pin all along. So right now I'm pinning the exterior panel to the panel with the zipper. And you want to pin it all along that edge. And then once we have this pinned, we're going to base this in place. But I'll show you those corners before I start stitching, just so you can get a better look of how they are when they're pinned together. So see my corner here? You can see where this line that I drew comes right up and it lines up with the edge that sticks out. Same thing here. They all line up. So it all lines up. That's how I know that this is going to be an accurate seam allowance and it's all going to line up when I flip it like this. So we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you'll just sew all the way. And this one you can backstitch. You don't have to worry about having any tails. Oh, I forgot to change my presser foot, so I'm going to do that. Sure that you're keeping everything all lined up as you go just take your time so that everything stays lined up and when you approach where your zipper pull is you're going to want to move it out of the way so stop with your zipper foot down lift up your presser foot move your zipper out of the way press your foot back down and continue sewing I'm going to trim these little tails and my stitches, my uh, thread tails as well. So now you're going to push this that you just attached, you're going to press it so it goes up towards your exterior contrast panel. So this panel you just attached, so you're pressing it away from your zipper. I used a vinyl here so I can't press on this because I will burn my vinyl so I'm just finger pressing it and then we're going to top stitch that seam. Another thing I wanted to mention when you're sewing seam allowances I have this little gadget here or tool it's to help with seam allowances you can use that that'll help you get an accurate seam allowance as well. You place it where the measurement is on the bed of your machine. If you have a magnetic bed, you can press it, put it where the bed of your machine is, and that'll help you get a more accurate seam allowance when you're sewing your pieces together. So I'm now going to top stitch this all the way down. Make sure your zipper pocket is out of the way and down this way. You don't want it flipped up towards this panel. You want to keep it down. So I like to just sort of roll everything up so it stays all together. top stitched, cut any threads if you have them, and that is all done. Wait, I want to stick there. 
Now we need to take this and we need to place these, same thing we did, so they are right sides together, lining up the edges as well, the two diagonal edges. So same way we did with this side, you're going to line up these two diagonal edges. And same thing, you'll have that little tail sticking out the bottom and the top. So what I like to do is pin the top and the bottom first. Get it all lined up and then I pin the rest of the way. to make some adjustment so I will do that as I go if I have to and there it is and then we're going to sew this the same way we sewed the other side so using that seam allowance given in the pattern if you top stitch, don't forget to return your stitch length back to your regular stitch length that you use for stitching. those little tails so now you're going to turn it so it's right sides out and you're going to press that seam again towards the exterior contrast so away from your bottom panel that has the zipper attached to it and then we're going to top stitch this seam so then we're going to turn it back so it is wrong sides out this just makes it easier for top stitching that seam I'm going to increase my stitch length and just take your time here as you go. So insert it in to your machine and put it under your presser foot. And you're just going to keep moving your fabric and your bag out of the way just like this, ensuring that your seam is flat and pressed as you go along. So you're going to notice it's curling up back here. That's because this is a tube right now and we're sewing in a tube. So I'm getting more here, more fabric bunching up behind. I just keep going until I get to the end. turn it right side out just to show you. And also because I want to look and see how it looks. So there it is. I've pop stitched it all along this edge and it looks really good. I took my time and as I said it's curling up behind your presser foot and you just keep stitching along. Both are stitched. So I'm going to turn this back. Wrong sides out. Let's make sure. Yes. Wrong sides out. Now we're going to make some marks. So you're going to match up your center marks. I'm 
on the bottom. I had to make sure I was holding the bottom. And I'm going to place a clip there just to help hold it in place. And this is how we're finding the other marks here. So you're just going to fold it so that it comes to a fold here and you're going to make a mark. And I'm using pencil because this is in my seam allowance. You're not going to see this after and it's inside the bag so you're not going to see it after for sure unless you deconstruct the bag. So I usually like to use pencil just so that if I'm pressing and such I don't accidentally erase my marks. So I've made those. Those are now my quarter marks. So they're all made. So you can see it there. Right there I've made my marks. So I just realized I forgot to attach my other side contrast. That's okay. This is a good lesson here. So normally you would attach the side contrast at the same point. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, add a bit of tape. I'm very sorry that I forgot. I got ahead of myself wanting to construct my exterior and I even made all the marks I needed for that too. So I'm going to place this at the mark given in the pattern. And I'm just going to be doing the same thing that I did when I sewed the um, exteriors together. I'm just going to be sewing in that too. That's okay. This just shows that we're human and we all make mistakes and forget things. So I'm going to change my presser foot because I need to use a Teflon foot. I'm going to have long tails. And I'm going to stitch this the same way I stitched the other one except for now my exteriors are assembled. So I need to you do this while I'm sewing inside this tube. But it shouldn't be too hard because I can just kind of push this out of the way. So again, this was lined up at the marks that I made that was given in the pattern. As you can see, I'm just keeping my exterior that's already attached out of the way. So this is what you do if you accidentally forget to attach it. Don't panic, just like I did, and still go ahead and attach it to your bag. It all works out in the end. Again, no one will ever know that you didn't attach it at the right step because it's attached. And we'll install our rivets and everything just as we did for the other side. There we go. 
So I have it stitched in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes for those rivets again. And same thing, install the rivets. Just the top is staying open. You're not putting anything in the top. You're leaving that open. That's being installed later. So line up the holes that you punched previously in your side connector with the punch or your press and just press those holes again. And it'll be a bit more bulk that you'll be sort of wrangling underneath in your press, but that's okay. You can still do it. And then grab your rivets and put your two rivets in two bottom if you're doing the large and if you're doing the small just the second one so the top hole stays open for now no one will ever know that you didn't install them because they are both here. I'll turn it right side out so you can see it. They're both installed on both sides. No one will ever know that you didn't install it at the correct spot in the pattern. So normally that would be installed right after you do this one here before you attach this exterior top contrast piece. But if you forget like me because you get excited to get going and get it finished and get the exterior done, don't worry, do as I did, just attach it after. Now that we've already made our marks before I went and showed you how to sew that side connector in if, I've, if you had forgotten. So again, you're just folding them so that the two middle marks meet. Then you'll fold the sides and make the marks where the sides are folded and that'll give you your quarter markings. Do this on the bottom. The bottom is the opposite side of where your side connector is. So do this on the bottom because this is for the bottom panel to be attached. Your bottom panel will look like this with your layers of interfacing and some quilting if you chose to do quilting, which was mentioned above in the pattern. So I just did some fun lines, no rhyme or reason to it. That's what I did. So now you're going to mark up your center points. Now, one thing to note is the sides of the bags are here where your side connectors are and the side of the bottom is going to be this curved edge here. So you wanna make sure that curved edge is where the side connector is. So first pin in place on the long edge. So line up your center marks and pin in place. We're going to flip it over. I've added a couple pins just to hold that center mark. So we're going to flip it over and then pin the center mark on the other long edge. And then I'm going to pin my center marks on the sides. And once I have that all pinned, all the center marks, or quarter marks, sorry, all pinned, I'm going to pin the rest of the way around and then I will sew this with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And you'll notice as you're pinning it fits nicely inside. So that's good, it means it's all fitting together. 
You'll want to use a zipper foot to help you get nice and close to your seam allowance without stitching on top of your um, interfacing. So if you have a zipper foot, switch to your zipper foot to help you stitch this part. And I mentioned earlier about my little um, seam guide, the magnetic seam guide. So that works only if you have a magnetic plate on your machine or a magnetic machine. So I'm going to use that just to help ensure that I get an accurate seam allowance. I've actually not used this before for a bag like this. So I'm going to be trying it while I'm stitching this bag. So there it is, it's all pinned, just like that. And now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And she also has a suggestion for how to sew this. So you wanna sew this with your exterior against the, the bed of the machine. And when you get to your corners, reach in and just flatten everything out. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. Another tip for sewing the bottom, when you have stress on your seams, so when your seams are flipped out like this, you can sometimes see your stitching. Use a thread that'll match the color of what you're using for your bottom panels. That way there your stitching won't show when you turn it right sides out. Another thing to note, move your zipper pocket out of the way so you don't stitch over that. I'm actually finding this seam guide is getting more in the way, so I'm going to move it. Alright, so after you sew that first time around, just going to move these out of my way, she instructs to sew a second row of stitching just to ensure that you caught anywhere where you were, would have veered maybe. So we're going to sew a second row of stitching as well. This is also good for our reinforcement of the bottom of the bag, sewing this second row of stitching.
there we are. I did my second row of stitching. Now we're going to trim this seam allowance down as per the instructions in the pattern. The other thing I wanted to mention, this quilting, as you're sewing, sometimes I find the interfacing lifts off the material. So I just find when I quilt the bottom or add any purse feet, that actually helps hold it on. So that's why I liked doing the quilting. So I'm going to trim this seam allowance. I'm going to use my painting shears. And there you go, it's all trimmed. Now the exterior is done. We can put this off to the side for now. We're going to move on to doing the lining. If you want to check just to make sure that your stitch is all caught and you don't have any openings, just run your fingers along inside along the seams and make sure that there's no holes. You can always tell too by looking, but just to make sure and to make sure you didn't snip some seams accidentally. So put this off to the side, we're going to move on to the lining. So for the lining, we now need our slip pocket. So that'll look like this and it is piece J. So I'm just going to move my kitty. So you're going to take this and you're going to fold it in half horizontally so the right sides are facing, or sorry, wrong sides. You're going to do it so the wrong sides are facing. Then you will pin it. If you're using directional fabric, I know mine is directional on one side and the other side, but I'll make this the inside of the pocket so I'm not too concerned about that. There are instructions for using directional fabric where you pin them right sides together, sew along the bottom edge, and then you can have your pocket pieces right sides up. That's why I got confused because I was thinking that I should have cut mine this way, but I had already cut it like this, so I'm just going to leave it. So once I have this all pinned, you're going to sew along the top edges here. So we're going to base them in place. You can take it to your iron and press it as well. I'm just going to finger press it here. So just press your bottom edge, just like that. Just like that. So we need our slip pocket trim. It looks like this. We need to draw a center line on this trim. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will come back and we will attach this. So I have that center line drawn. I knew there was one I was forgetting when I was preparing everything. You're going to place tape, double-sided tape, on either side of that line you made. using the wrong scissors. I have scissors labeled that I use for cutting tape and scissors used for cutting zippers so I label my zippers. It's also helpful if my husband needs scissors for cutting any tape or any paper. I've told him that they are all labeled with what you can use them for so that he doesn't touch my good Kai scissors and use that for cutting paper. So now that you have both those lines, you're going to remove the tape from the back side of one of the lines. And 
you're going to place this as she states in the pattern. So you're going to place this onto the slip pocket trim. And this is all on page 33. So you'll want to refer to that for the placement. Then we're going to remove the tape on the other side and pull this over. there you go. You can add some clips to hold it in place. I'm not going to because the tape is holding it pretty tight. And now we're going to top stitch this with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. There you have it, it's all top stitched. That is now done. Next we need to grab our lining panel pieces. One of them, this is piece G. So we need to grab one of them and we're going to take one of the, the main lining and this pocket and we're going to lay it on top here. Now there are marks on your panel piece, the pattern piece that you need to make to know where to place this. So I'm going to go make those marks now and then I will come back and I will show you how to stitch this in place. I have gone ahead and made the marks that I need for where to place my slip pocket. So I'm going to line up the bottom edge of the slip pocket with those marks that I made. And again, those marks are on your pattern piece. Once you have the bottom of the slip pocket lined up, you'll go ahead and pin it all the way up the sides. And then we're going to top stitch along the bottom edge of this slip pocket. So just the bottom edge. There we go. Now it is top stitched along the bottom edge. Now we need to make some marks depending on the size of bag that you've, you've chosen to make. We need to make some marks. I'm making the large so I've got my two marks already made for where we're going to stitch the lines for the pocket. So I'm going to start on the edge, go down, across on top of my top stitching, up, then pivot one stitch back down the other side, across the bottom again, back up, pivot and stitch up here, back down and across and then back up. The instructions and measurements for this are given in the pattern and that is on page 34. So you'll want to refer to that for the seam allowance and how to stitch that and where to mark your marks for the different pocket that you're making. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching mine now.
now that I have my pocket all stitched as she's instructed in the pattern, I'm going to install the rivets. Again, if you don't have rivets, as I mentioned before, you can use Chicago screws. If you don't have either of those, you don't need to, to add any. You can just leave this and you will just have your slip pockets just stitched like that, which still looks beautiful. So I'm going to install my rivets at the marks that she tells you to in the pattern. Normally what I do is I save all my hole and punching and rivet installing for one step, but because these are needed to be installed before I get to the next step, I kind of have to here, so that's why I'm doing them. So I'm going to go ahead and install my rivets just above where your stitch lines are for your pocket. And I'm just making a little mark here just so I can know where to punch. It's easier for me to see the center when I'm just making a mark before I use my punch. Another thing you want to do is use a piece of heavy stabilizer behind your rivet so you'll want to punch holes for that as well. So I have some Peltex here, I'm just going to cut the hole, just like that. As I mentioned before, the size of rivet will depend on the materials that you've used. There we go I've got my rivets installed now this is complete next we need our zipper pocket overlay so the piece in the beginning that I said I cut out you'll need this so you can get some beacon three-in-one yeah. glue so it looks like this or you can use some double-sided tape for this next step I'm going to use some double-sided tape so that I don't have to wait for it to dry so you'll want to place this on your lining piece that we just attached our slip pocket to and you want to place this at the measurement she gives in the pattern so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and we'll stitch it all in place all right so I have this all positioned now I'm going to sew just the outer edge of this zipper overlay so just this outer edge here you're not sewing this edge just this edge all around no back stitching we're doing the same thing we've done previously where we leave long tails and start and stop in the same hole needle hole as where you started you'll stop in that same hole and then you'll tie the long tails off through the back of the fabric so go ahead and start stitching again don't back stitch if you are worried about your corners, you can do as I mentioned before and just take one stitch and then continue stitching.
I'm going to pull these threads through the back. Grab that little loop. So I pull the one that's on the back and it kind of pulls up a little loop and then I stick my end of my seam ripper into the loop and just pull. But be careful, don't do it on the side where it'll pull the seam and rip it or the thread I mean and rip it. So just be very careful. Now we're going to tie these off. And because they're right together, I'm just gonna tie them off together because they're so close. I don't need to tie them separately. I'm just gonna tie them together. One less step for me. And then I'm going to trim my threads. You don't really have to if you don't want to. Nobody's going to see that side of your bag. So there it is. It's all top stitched all the way around. I started and stopped in the same hole so that there's no back stitching, no nothing at all. Now we need to cut this opening in the box. So I'm going to put my fabrics together and I'm going to cut this opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to take these scissors and carefully cut. And then what I'll do is I'll flip to the wrong side and continue cutting. And I use duckbill scissors here for this part, but first I'm going to cut in as far as I can without cutting the zipper overlay. You want to be very careful not to cut that. So I'll do it this way, just so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to take my duckbill scissors and I'm going to trim. This doesn't have to be perfect or pretty because this is going to be hidden by your zipper and also inside the lining, between the, the lining and the exterior. So just cut away so that you expose that zipper opening. If you're hearing little jingle bells, that's my cats. They both have little bells on their collars so we know where they are, can hear them at any time. Kind of annoying when you're sleeping at night and you hear them running around. So there you go, as you can see, mine doesn't look very pretty but I have this zipper pocket opening exposed. The next thing you need is your zipper pocket zipper. So this one, if you haven't already trimmed it to length, go ahead, it is referred to in the pattern on page, let me find it, 36, so you'll want to refer to that in the pattern for this. So we're going to place this in the zipper pocket opening. So what you need to do is decide which way you want your zipper to close when you're wearing the bag. If you're right-handed, she gives some tips. If you're right-handed, she prefers it to close to the right. If you're left-handed, you're going to want it to close to the left. So her pull needs to close towards the right when she's wearing the bag. And that's the same thing for me because this will be the back of my bag. I want my zipper pull to close to the right and open towards the left. So I'm going to place it the same way she does. So what I'm going to do here here is use some double-sided tape. We use so much double-sided tape. I'm so glad I got this roll. And I'll link to you in the description because this tape is fantastic. It's really sticky, like it sticks to my fingers. Probably some of the best double-sided tape I've had. I'll also link to a video I did in the description for how to make your double sided tape sticky again. You do need to press it sometimes a little bit long just to help activate the sticky power as I like to call it. Sometimes you have to press it for a little bit longer. Sometimes I cheat and I try not to and it doesn't really work. But it does help if you press it. But this one's really sticky like it even sticks to the table. The sides here it's so sticky. It's awesome. Now I'm in Canada, so the link I'll be providing will be a Canadian link. If you're somewhere else in the world, you'll want to check the Amazon for your place where you are in the world. 
So again, that's my zipper. I have it with the double-sided tape on it. Now I want to position this so that it is centered in this opening. So I'm going to remove the double-sided tape, the backing, not the tape. See how it sticks to my fingers? Even the pull, it sticks to it. So I'm going to position this in the center. Ah. <laughs> Centering it as best I can. I think I'm going to flip it this way and start with it this way. Let's see how that looks when I flip it over. It's such good tape that it's so strong when I pull it away from where it's stuck to it even rips off my interfacing so I have to be very careful but it's good because that means that whatever I'm working on is not going to move it's secure so when I'm stitching it it's really held in place I don't have to worry about it this is the first project I've used that tape on there we go. So my zipper tape is centered and I just used where we stitched the overlay as where my zipper starts and stops. So there you go, that is now centered. Okay, so now that this is attached and we have the zipper centered in our zipper overlay, the next thing we're going to need to do is position our one of our zipper pockets. So this is piece I, so you're going to flip your lining panel so it is wrong sides up and you're going to place some tape along the bottom edge of the zipper. So the part of the zipper that's towards the bottom of your bag. Some more double-sided tape. If you don't have double-sided tape, you can use a glue stick. A regular washable glue stick also works. Again, leave the glue to dry. If you didn't use a material that you um, can press, so for example the cotton, you can go ahead and press it with your iron and that'll help dry it quick. Then you don't have to wait for it to dry. You can just get right to sewing. So I'm placing a piece of double-sided tape along this edge here. Peeling it back. And now I'm going to place this pocket. And this pocket, she does give instructions for if you're using a directional fabric. I'm using a directional fabric, but I kind of cut it on an angle, so it's not super directional, but that's okay. So I'm going to place it so that my top side is down. So my top side, so it'll be facing upside down. So it's like this. So the picture upside like this, here's the top. Top is where my thumb is right now and that way. And I'm going to place this as she instructs in the pattern just so that the top edge of this pocket is just below the zipper and I'm just going to press it in place. Just like that. So now you have it looking like this when you flip it over. Add some clips here. What I like to do is actually roll this down and then I add some clips and that keeps that also all together and not flopping all around. Just like that. So now we're going to top stitch this bottom edge just along the bottom edge, nowhere else, just the bottom edge. You're going to top st stitch that with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. So again, just along the bottom edge of the zipper here. Switch to a zipper foot if you have one. This will help you get a nice even stitch. And don't forget to leave zipper uh, long um, thread tails as well. So you'll start and stop, no back stitching, leave your long tails just as we've done previously for other steps in the pattern. When you approach your zipper, 
move it out of the way, and just continue stitching. And don't forget to leave long tails when you stop. Then we're going to, again, pull these tails through. So I just grab it and I pull it and then I see a little loop and I pull the loop through. As I mentioned before, I really like this. No back stitching look. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll still do back stitching. Not everybody will be looking at your bags looking for that, but this just helps give it a more professional finished look. Or if I'm using a material where I can't tell too if I've backstitched, like sometimes your cotton is really busy, you can't tell about the backstitching, so I'll go ahead and just leave it. So now that that part is stitched, we will unclip this all. You're going to fold this down. When you fold it down, you want to finger press this, and you can again take this to your iron and iron it out of the way if you want. So now again, we're going to place another piece of double-sided tape on the top edge of the zipper that we didn't stitch. Then we'll remove the backing and you will take the remaining lining zipper panel and you will place it, so the remaining H, and place it so it is just above that zipper as she instructs in the pattern. Make sure you're lining up the sides with the previously attached zipper pocket piece. So you want to line up your sides. So you'll see my sides are lined up. So my sides are all lined up all the way down and this is pressed. Now we're going to flip over and we have long tails again. So that's good. You've, when you've cut off, you've left some tails. If not, pull them out. And now you're going to stitch this. And what I'm going to do first is just for extra security, add some pins to hold it down. This just keeps that pocket from flipping up on me. Now what you're going to do is starting at the line you started at, you're going to stitch up, come across here and stitch back down and stop in that needle hole you stopped at previously. Oops. Now it's going to be a little bit trickier to see. Where the needle hole is. Again, no back stitching, just stitch. We're going to pull those threads through later. I'm sliding my zipper out of the way now because there's room for it. tails. Oh shoot. And look what I did here. See what I did there? So I'm going to have to, obviously pinning it down didn't help. So I'm going to do what I showed you guys in
Okay, so my zipper pocket, as you can see, it didn't stay pinned down. I should have pinned it down here more. So I'm going to do the same thing I showed everyone in the previous steps where I did the handle. And I'm just going to pull some of my threads. I'm going to go back a bit until this is all undone and then pull them back through because again, we're not back stitching, we're pulling the threads through. So you'll never notice that this was ever done. That's the beauty of doing it this way. I should have put a pin here and I'm going to do that now. Another good thing to learn when you do a video is that. So pulling the threads through and then I'm going to just stitch back up that side and over the front again or the top and then I'm going to pull my threads through and be done. So I'm going to restitch that but first I'm just pulling all these threads through so they don't come undone. was probably when I was trying to insert it into the bed of my machine, pulled on the thread accidentally. back to looking pretty again. No one will ever know that that happened when they look at your bag. So I'm just tying my threads. So I pulled them through the back and now I'm just tying them off. There we go. Now that is attached. I've sewn up the sides across and back down starting and stopping where I started and stopped when I sewed that bottom edge. Now I'm going to remove these pins because I don't need those there now. I needed them earlier. And because this is not the same length here, I'm going to go ahead and trim that so it is the same length. There we go, I just trimmed it. You can take this to your um, cutting machine, your um, rotary cutter and cutting mat and trim it with your cutting mat if you want a more even seam. I'm okay with it. Then we're pressing these up. She does give a measurement in the seam allowance so you'll press them up. So you'll want to take these to your iron and press these with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern and that's on page 38 so go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and we'll finish sewing our pocket. Once you have that all pressed the way she says I've added some clips. We're going to sew the size of our pocket. So you want to move your main lining panel out of the way as you sew and sew with the seam allowance given in the pattern. You are not going to be sewing the bottom edge, you're just sewing these side seams and that is it. Just the sides.
Alright, so now you have your zipper pocket sides all sewn. You will have a zipper pocket with an opening in the bottom here. And that is for turning the bag right sides out through later. That is it for the zipper pocket. You have all your sides of your pocket sewn. And now you have a pocket that has a hole through the bottom. This will be used to turn the bag right sides out through later. And that is your pocket all complete. The next step is forming our darts or making our darts. So these little spots here, in the pattern she has a measurement for where you need to mark a line, so you'll want to refer to that. That's on page um, 38, so you'll want to refer to that for where you're making these marks. And then once you have those marks made, you'll place your darts so they are wrong, right sides together, lining up the edges. And what I like to do is smooth out this edge here that's folded, where the fabric is folded, not where it's cut, and just make sure that that's not pleated or wrinkled, so you'll see the dart goes up to here where it's cut out and then I've put a clip here just to help hold this fabric nice and even and flat and then I'll repeat that for the other side as well. So I'll place some clips, I'll smooth out the fabric past the dart and then clip it in place just like that so they both look like that. Now I'm going to sew how she instructs in the pattern on the dart to close up the dart and I'm going to sew it. And I'm only doing the end darts right now and then I'll go and pin and clip the darts on the other side of these ones just so that there's no clips in the way I only have to deal with the, the one set of clips. And now I will repeat that process so press the darts pin the darts so the fabric is pretty sides touching lining up the edges and the bottom edges as well placing a clip further down the fabric you're also going to repeat this whole process for the other side of the bag so the other lining piece that you have the second one so again draw your lines on this one where she instructs in the pattern and then clip your darts together and sew how she instructs I'm going to repeat that whole process for the remaining lining panel and I'm going to be a rebel and not pin and I'm going to smooth that out And there you have it all your darts are sewn now we need to trim these so I'm going to go ahead and trim them I'm just going to use my pinking shears you can trim each as you finish sewing it I'm just trimming them all at the same time just a little bit easier rather than stopping And there we go all my darts are trimmed now my bottom is or my lining sorry is complete we are done with the lining pieces for now we're going to move on so for these next steps we need our top zipper band and our top zipper so this one here I'm going to remove this zipper tape uh, the zipper pull for now so she has you make some marks in the pattern 
on top of these pieces. So you'll want to refer to that for where to make these marks and that is on page 39. So you'll want to refer to that. If you haven't trimmed your zipper tape already, you'll also want to trim that to size and that is also on page 39. Now we're going to turn the top edges of the zipper tape at a 90 degree angle and she has full instructions in the pattern for how to do this. So you have a mark here and you pinch at that mark that you made and that forces it to turn at a 90 degree angle. So there's the mark. I'm pinching it at that mark and I'm pushing it so that it goes against the zipper teeth, just like that. So where the mark is, is against my zipper teeth here. I also have a video as well showing how to do this in more detail. So I'll post that in the link below, uh, in the description below, sorry, with the link so that you can go and view that video before you start doing this step. So again, I'm just going to show you one more time. There's the mark. I'm pinching at that mark and then I'm taking where I've pinched and folded. It's hard to do. And so I fold it there and then I'm turning my zipper so that the teeth line up with that folded edge where your mark is. So just like that. And then I'm going to stick a pin in place just to help hold it so it doesn't shift on me or move. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. Once you have those turned, you're going to stitch these in place. You can also use some glue. She does show you how to use some glue in the pattern. I'm going to stitch these just so that I don't have to wait for the glue to dry. What I like to do is leave my pin in and I hand crank across the pin just so that I don't break a needle accidentally and I keep stitching until I'm past the needle and then once I'm past the needle I'll then pull it out and keep back stitching a bit. So I back stitch a couple of times. I repeat that for this side so I'll start stitching but then once I get close to that edge where the needle is I will hand crank over it, remove the needle, there you go, both my zipper ends are turned. You can go ahead and trim these edges off, I'm going to leave them for now. There you go, both the edges are turned. You can go ahead and trim that off. So just gotta find my scissors that say zipper. Trim those edges so they're even. And then you can put some seam sealant on the edges to stop that from fraying. Just like that, they'll look like that. They'll all be lined up. The next thing you want to do is cut the zipper tape where the first tooth is, so the very last tooth or first tooth, and cut a piece of the zipper tape or make a mark. I'm going to make a mark because this is going into a zipper end after, so I'm just making a mark on the end with some pencil. I just did that, but you can just trim the corner right here, and that way there you'll know what side had the one where the teeth, the first tooth was. So it's that one there for me. So I've made that mark. Now we're going to take your zipper, and for this part I like to just keep it together, just for this part, and then I'll show you what to do. So you need to find your top band and use the one that she gives in the pattern as the one to start with, and the measurement to start with. And you're going to pin your zipper starting at the mark that she says in the pattern. So just for like that. And you're going to pin it in place all the way down, so I'm going to flip mine around so I can pin it better, and you're going to stop pinning at the second mark. And if you're concerned that you'll forget, because it is underneath your zipper, you can transfer that mark to your zipper, just so that you know where to, to stop when you get to it. So we're going to base this in place, 
using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern all the way across the zipper. I'm going to switch to a zipper foot. You can also use tape to secure this in place if you would rather over the clips. I'm just using my clips to hold it in place as I sew. And as I approach where this line is, I'm going to slow down a little bit. like that. It's now basted in place. Now we're going to take the second zipper. And the other thing I wanted to mention, this top zipper band, it is wider at the top. So these top parts are wider. It goes on an angle like this. So oh, I can't show you. They go like this. So see how my hand goes like this. So say these were the zippers, they go out. So you want to make sure the wider end, which is up here, they're wider, is at the top. And this is where your zipper is being attached at the end that is shorter. So my zipper is still attached. This is just to help me for this part so that I know that I'm sewing it the right way because you don't want to sew your zipper on the wrong way. And what I do is I just flip it over and then I know because these two are pretty sides touching and the zipper's in the middle, I'll undo it a bit. I'll line it up at that line as she instructs in the pattern. Clip it, remove this first piece and then I'll continue clipping all the way along, pinning it all the way along. And this, just make sure that you've pinned it the right way to the right side and you didn't get anything confused. Because even though it looks like it wouldn't be confusing, you'd be surprised how many times I've even accidentally attached a zipper wrong and to the wrong edge and I've had to make sure or put it on the wrong side. So I've had to unstitch a zipper and when you're using a vinyl cork or faux leather sometimes that stitching you end up seeing it later so it's just best to be safe so now that that's pinned I'm going to again base this in place and again you could have used double-sided tape there if you preferred to hold it in place I'm just using clips As I approach that second line where I need to stop stitching, I back stitch, and there you have it. Your zipper is attached to both pieces so that when they're zipped up, you flip them over, they'll be like that. Now we need to connect this piece to our linings. Oh, that's my exterior. The lining pieces. So this lining, I want my zipper to close the same way as my zipper pocket. So I know that the opening of the zipper is right here. So that's where the zipper pull will close is right here. So that's where it is here. I'm going to place this top zipper band so that it is right sides together. So pretty sides are touching. And again, remember your top edge is wider. So I'm going to pin them in place so the pretty sides are touching. pinning it all the way across. Just like that. Now we're going to sew them together as she instructs in the pattern. And the other thing you want to do is, before I go on, I forgot to mention, is pin this zipper tail down. 
so that it is out of your way and you don't sew it. You don't want to sew that zipper tail into that seam because you're sewing all the way across this whole, whole seam. So just make sure that zipper tail is down and out of the way as you're stitching so you don't sew it. So you're sewing from one end all the way to the other right now. notice my zipper tail was out of the way so it didn't get sewn straight across. There we go. It's all attached. My zipper tail goes down. It's not in the way. Now you'll want to push the seam allowance down towards the lining, so down here. I'm going to finger press it. If you've used materials that you can press with an iron, go ahead and press this. I'm going to finger press it. And then we're going to top stitch this. So I'm going to take my presser foot off for my zippers and install my other one, and then I'm going to top stitch. Just be careful when you're top stitching that you move your zipper out of the way. You don't want to hit that zipper tail and accidentally get it caught in your top stitching. So give this a top stitch. Repeat that whole process for the second side. So sew that top band, oop, keep dropping this. <laughs> sew that top band to the lining. So again, make sure the zipper is touching the lining panel. So they're going to be pretty sides touching with the zipper sandwiched in between. Clip it on both ends. Clip your zipper tail down out of the way for now. And pin it all the way across. So now I'm going to sew this again with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, when I get to this zipper tail, make sure it's out of the way. down towards the lining. You have an iron uh, material that you can iron. Go ahead and take this to your iron and press it. top stitched. Now that is complete. Our top zipper band is attached. Next we need to join our two lining panels together. So I'm going to place them so they are right sides together. And I'm going to pin them all along the sides but I'm making sure I'm matching up these edges where our top band and our lining panel met or were joined together. And lining up all my darts. I'm pinning those first and then I'll pin the rest of the way around after. Move your zipper tails out of the way. So just push them down in towards the lining. And 
and then you can pin the rest of the way around. Once you have this pinned, you can sew it with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And pay special attention to where she says to sew because we're only sewing the sides and we're stopping at a mark she gives in the pattern. We're not sewing the bottom, we're just sewing the sides. And pay special attention on page 42, she tells you where to stop sewing, so you'll wanna go ahead and do that. So you're going to sew your sides. And sew it with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. Another thing, because you top stitch, don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you stitch with. And when you're sewing where the zipper is, move them both out of the way, both the zipper pieces. You can even do that. That makes sure they're up out of the way. Now we're going to trim the seam allowances, leaving the tops and bottoms untrimmed. So up here you'll leave it untrimmed. And you're not trimming the bottom, just along that side seam that you just sewed. And again, I'm using my pinking shears. And I'm not trimming that top. So I just go off the edge when I hit that top band so that I don't trim it. And at the bottom, I don't start right at the bottom where I started sewing or stopped sewing. I just kind of go on an angle up a bit from it. So here I am and I just go off. Just like that. So I've left these top edges there. Now we're going to move on. We need to remove these clips that we have on the bottom of our bag and turn this so it is right sides out. You'll want to unzip this zipper in the pocket. You don't want to leave your zipper pocket open. Uh, it's closed, I mean. You'll want to close it. So that is right side out and your exterior is also wrong side out. So we're going to take this and slip our lining inside the exterior making sure again that your zipper pocket is lined up and also take a note of where the zipper is on the exterior that is the front of your bag you can make it the back of the bag if you prefer but just to make a note if you're placing your zipper pocket so it's at the back of the bag you want that on the opposite side the side that doesn't have any zipper on the front so we're going to push this side connector down out of the way and we'll line up the quarter mark at the top. So here's my side seam here on the lining. I'm pushing my connector out of the way and there's a line on the side that we made, those quarter marks, and I'm pinning it there. After I have that pinned, I'm going to clip the rest of the way around. And I'm standing up just because I find I get a better view of the bag this way. 
So I'm clipping all the way around now. These are the final stages of the bag. We are almost done. This is where it's exciting because we get to see what the bag looks like once we're all done. If you had center marks on your top zipper panel, go ahead and line that up with the center marks on your exterior as well, just to make sure everything lines up nicely and neatly. I like to add as many clips as possible just to make sure nothing shifts on me while I'm sewing, because it has happened. And there we go, I am all pinned. Now that that's all clipped together, we are going to sew around the whole top edge. Be careful when you get to this area where your um, connectors are. I'm going to switch out to my zipper foot or thin foot. I have a foot that's thin like this. You can see it, how thin it is. That's the foot I like to use. And that way there, when I get towards those connectors, I don't have to worry about hitting them, but just be careful as you're getting there, just kind of maneuver them out of the way. And you want to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So sew all the way around with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Oops. When you get to where the zipper tails are, make sure they're pushed down out of the way. They're not up, so make sure they're down. I have to find where mine are. I don't want them up. I don't want to hit them as I'm sewing, so I'm going to move them out of the way. I'm approaching the connector and I'm kind of just maneuvering it as much as I can out of the way so I can stitch around by it without hitting it. You definitely don't want to hit that hardware as you're sewing. go I have stitched that all the way around using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern if any of the areas you're worried were not stitched with an accurate seam allowance go ahead and go back and restitch so I'm going to do that here because it looks like I kind of veered off a bit to pull the lining out so it is just above the exterior. Just the top edge. So just like that. You're not turning it all the way out just yet. You're just revealing the top edge. going to use my precision turning tool and I'm going to flatten out those top seams as much as I can. And then I'm going to use some clips. 
clips and I'm going to clip this top edge just to help it be pressed as I'm sewing so that it is not bubbly. I get a nice edge. And if you have an extension table, you can go ahead and use that now for this. That'll help hold the bag as you're top stitching because that's what we're doing next. And I know you're thinking, but the bottom of the bag is still open. Don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that as soon as we're done the top stitching. So you want to go really slow when you're doing your top stitching just so that you get a nice top stitched edge. Don't rush it. Take your time. Use a nice st uh, stitch length, so a nice long stitch length. So, so, you know, three and a half or even a four if you prefer. Whatever stitch length you use. And as you can see, I'm using, again, a lot of clips. That's because, again, I can't press this, so I really want it to have a nice snug fit at the top here. I don't want anything shifting on me while I'm sewing. When you get to where your connectors are when you're stitching, again, just move them out of the way so you don't hit them. You don't want to hit that with your presser foot. So I'm going to get my extension table. Going to use my extension table and that's just going to hold my bag up for me so I'm not wrestling trying to hold it up as I'm stitching. So again switch to a different foot if you need it or keep your zipper foot on if that helps you get a nice um, top stitch. Now another thing you can do here is the same thing we did before is start and stop leaving long tails and then we'll pull them through just as we did on many other steps such as the strap so we'll do the same thing. You'll leave long tails and you'll start and stop in that same mark at both places. So start and stop in the same hole and leave a long tail. So I'm going to start on the side here. going to switch actually to my one foot. Sometimes my presser foot is okay, my regular presser foot sewing over Moira, sometimes it gets stuck so that I don't get any, you know, smaller stitching. I'm going to just switch just to be safe. Alright, so starting stitching, don't back stitch, just stitch. Kind of feel like a rebel doing that. And just take your time, try not to go too fast. Sometimes I find when I go too fast, I get uneven seams, but no one's going to take out a ruler and measure it either. Make sure your zipper tails are pushed down when you're sewing so that you don't top stitch them into a seam. Yes, I have done that. That's how I know it can happen. So I hold my zipper tails down. So many things to hold down so that they don't get in the way. Again, I'm back at the D-ring connector, the side connector, so I'm moving it out of the way, ensuring my zipper tails are still down, not in the way. Try to keep your seam allowance as accurate and even as possible. And I'm approaching back where I started. So again, not going to backstitch. 
I'm going to stop in that same needle hole that I started, pull long tails, I just threw my scissors at myself, pull long tails, I'm going to remove this for now. So I have long tails, so now we need to take a needle. She does have you turn the bag first, but I'm going to proceed with this first, this step before I turn my bag right side out. So I'm going to take my needle and pull the threads up through this center seam here. So you stopped in the same hole, so you should be able to pull them through. And I'm going to trim them to the same length. So you'll be able to pull them through at the same time. And you're going back up between the two seams, so between where that fold is. Just like that. Repeat that for the other side. Again, trim them so they are the same length. Just makes it easier for putting in through the needle. Then I'm going to tie them together. Such a nice way to get such nice seams. And to get nice top stitching. You want to tie these off. I'm going to thread these through a little bit and then cut it off, but I'm going to thread it through where you can't see, and I'm going to cut it off. My threads are not behaving. They don't want to thread through the needle together. No. Oh. I'm going to trim them one more time. Of course, this would happen while I'm filming. one thread it doesn't want to go. There we go. Now I'm going to fish it through a bit so that it goes down towards the lining, between the lining and the exterior. just to kind of pull it down and I'm going to push it so that it comes out the, the lining and I'm checking to make sure I didn't put my needle through the exterior and I'm just pushing it. This gets really hard for me to do. Sometimes I have to pull it out with pliers, but just like that. And then I'm going to pull it, cut the threads. Now they're snipped into there and you don't see any back stitching, nothing at all. Next, we need to turn the bag right sides out. Be gentle, because if you have your stabilizer and it's starting to lift, you want to be careful so that you don't make it lift anymore. So there it is, I've turned it right sides out. Then you're going to Turn the bag, pull the, ex the bottom of the bag through that lining zipper pocket. And this is where we're closing that bottom of the bag, if mine will come out. So 
So this is where we're closing that bottom of the bag now. So you want to line up your darts again and pin all along. And then we're going to sew the bottom of the bag with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And this is closing up that opening in the bottom of the bag. Any openings that are in a bag, I do like to leave for the end. So I like that we're doing this at the end, just in case there's any errors or any mistakes, I can go back and fix it. So now we're going to sew that bottom edge with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. Don't forget if you increase your stitch length, return it back to your stitch length you used to sew. We're going to trim that seam allowance. Just like that. Then we're going to push this back inside the bag. And then we're going to pull out our lining pocket. And because we already have that turned under, we don't have to deal with that. So we're just going to pin it all along the edge where it is pressed under already. And I like to put those little edges that are raw, the side edges, I kind of like to push them down so that they don't poke out of the edge of the pocket when I stitch. And I'm going to stitch that closed. You can also hand stitch this closed if you prefer. The choice is really yours. I figure it's in a pocket. No one's going to see it. So it's fine just to stitch it that way. You want to push that back into your pocket. Push your lining down. Oh, I just love how this looks. This is so exciting. So there it is so far. Now we need to use our hole punch and we need to punch the top hole here with our, with our punch, provided you had chosen to make that. going to punch that hole you're going to go right through the lining as well so you're coming out through that top zipper band so you want to have everything held nicely together so that nothing shifts on you so make sure it's all flat and go right through that hole that you made earlier and if it doesn't push all the way through I can see where mine was I'm going to grab my awl and see if I can push that through it's kind of thick oh it did and I'm going to do the same thing on this side Again, using my awl just to make sure it poked through. And then we're going to install our rivets. And again, these are going to be showing in the top band. 
So find the size of rivet that will be able to go through all that material. Once you have them pushed all the way through, you're then going to set the rivets. The rivets are set. Now you have it's hard to see on that one. Now you have three rivets and your bag is all enclosed, all closed up. The next thing we need to do is insert our zipper. So I have a handy zipper tool, or you can do it the way she instructs in the pattern. My zipper is here. So that's using the edge where you marked that will be the first piece that goes in. I'm going to use my handy zipper tool and I'm going to install my zipper pull. And again, I'll link this in the bottom in the description of the bag. check to make sure that when it zipped closed the zipper top lines up so it's kind of a bit off so I'm just going to do that one more time nice and lined up. I don't know if you can see it. It's all lined up here. These line up when it's zipped closed. I just like having it so that it does that. It just to me feels a little bit better. Not necessary if it's off by a little bit. That's fine. Now we need to install the metal zipper end. So what you do is you take your tape and you fold one piece back on itself so the, the back piece will touch the back of the zipper teeth and fold it the other way so it'll look like this. I place a clip just to help hold it in place and then grab your zipper end. So that's this little piece with the screw. You'll want to use some Beacon 3-in-1 glue. I'm out, that's why it was upside down so I'm hoping I can get a little bit out of this, which I think I did. Then you'll install the zipper end, so by putting the zipper tape into the zipper end. Carefully push it in. And then it also comes with a screw, so you'll attach the screw. 
The screw is magnetic. Where is my screwdriver? So the screw is magnetic, so I just put it onto the screwdriver. And then with the zipper end down against my table, I start screwing it in. I don't screw this in so it's against my hand because the screwdriver can slip. So I try to keep my hand out of the way as much as possible and I screw it in. See, just like that, my, hand, my screwdriver slipped. That would have stabbed my hand if this was in my hand. And again. <laughs> Just like that. It's screwed in place. And the nice thing about it is the glue will help hold it if anything ever happens and the zipper end loses its screw. It's got the glue to help hold it in place. And there it goes. Zipped up. Next, we're going to attach our strap. There it is. It is a slouchy bag, so you'll notice it's slouchy. I can squish it up. The only part that's not slouchy is the bottom, but there it is. So that is your completed Maison bag. This is the large. There is the small and the medium, so the medium's a little bit smaller, and then the small won't have this zipper pocket on the front. Again, you have an option for a crossbody strap, so you can also make the crossbody strap for this bag. Even though it's mentioned for the small, you can make it for the large or medium. You have your zipper pocket with your zipper pocket overlay and a slip pocket with this really nice trim and your front pocket on the exterior of the bag which i love perfect for slipping your cell phone into or even your keys or sunglasses whatever you want so i hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way if you have any questions please post them below in the comments you can also email the designer at the email provided in the pattern don't forget to post your bags on social media and use the hashtags provided in the pattern so that we can find your bags and also post in the Facebook group as well so that everybody on Facebook can also see it. So again, I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me. I'm looking forward to seeing all your bags and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.